Tonight's first inductee into the Australian Football Hall of Fame was a giant of our game. As the dominant big man, for more than a decade, he redefined the ruck roll. A match-winning star, this West Coast Eagles favourite set a new standard in Australian rules football. A decorated career is tonight acknowledged with a much-deserved induction alongside football superstars. He's deserving to be a Hall of Famer because he, he changed the game. He changed what that ruck role looks like. He stood up in, in big games and in big moments and he was able to do it for an extended period of time. I mean, in terms of ruckman, you think of Polly Farmer and the way he introduced handball and, and perfected that. And I think of Dean Cox, his ability to kick both sides of his body to cover the ground and, and really accumulate uncontested as well as contested possessions. Slamming it in long is Cox. He's he slammed it long and slammed it beautifully. There's a legendary story at West Coast about him doing a 2K time trial and Coxie not even being able to run the whole 2Ks. Such was his level of fitness. But if you had have said to me that he'd end up being one of the greatest, if not the greatest ruckman of all time, I, I would have found that hard to believe. Cox brilliantly done. Oh, that's a magnificent goal. A fitting sealer. It turns out he had some issue with his, it wasn't his nose, but something in there. He, he couldn't breathe properly. Whatever was causing the issue, it certainly wasn't a lack of size in his nose, obviously, because it's enormous. Got whatever he needed to fixed up, and overnight he's running significantly improved. Cox works his way to 50. He goes for home, and that is a magnificent goal. I think that was the first milestone, and then the next milestone really came through the unfortunate injury to Michael Gardner in 2003. You know, Michael Gardner, I think, was probably the best player in the competition. And then in round one the next year, had a really serious knee injury and was out for the whole year. And with that, gave Coxie a level of game time that he needed to really prove just how valuable a player he could be. And he, he, he never looked back from, from that point on. Cox, a beautiful tap, and here they go. Cox, beautiful tap down to Kerr. Well, she was really keen to utilise his running ability. And not just that, he, he could kick the ball as well as uh, any mid-sized midfielder. So the team had a real focus to, to get the ball in his hands as much as possible. Exquisite skills for man that side, Dean Cox. And other ruckmen just weren't able to, to run with him for the entire game. You know, that connection you can get when you play with someone for an extended period and you can almost understand what they're going to do without any verbal communication is very special. Jump from the boundary. I think he felt that we had different characteristics and he had to judge his taps accordingly around how much speed we'd have and, and various other things. Such was his dominance that not only would he worry about where he was tapping it, he'd want the ball landing at the perfect trajectory and even spinning in a drop punt fashion so that it was easier for mids to grab the ball as they were running on. The only oh, one on the center. Look at that. That is just pretty to watch. So yeah, it was a gift, you know, to be able to hit a, a contest as a, as a mid at speed, knowing the ball's going to be where you expect it. It's just a huge advantage and one that I was very lucky to, to benefit from. Most of our hit zones were named after racetracks around Perth. We did have the ghost train on a boundary throw-in where the, the arrangement was that the ball would end up going over the ruckman's heads without either of them touching it. The issue is Dean didn't feel he got enough attention if he let the ghost train happen because he didn't actually get a touch on the ball and it looked like he just missed it. <laughs> <laughs> and Dean Cox is in the clear, the 204 centimetre giant. When the game was up for grabs, you could feel him really lifting and the rest of the players responded from that. His ability to perform in big games and his ability to produce such a high level over such an extended period of time, they're certainly two of the things that, that stand out to me. Loved a goal, loved a celebration, and rightly so. Drop part off the boot, sensational! The West Coast Eagles are the premiers for 2006. He was jumping around like a pork chop saying, I can't believe I just won the Norm Smith medal, which was embarrassing for him that he didn't actually win it. He was great that day. He still says he's the only bloke to come runner-up in the Norm Smith medal twice, even though the votes won't, won't prove that to be correct. I think the fact that he didn't put those boundaries on what he was able to do physically or skill-wise either is one of the reasons why he did become 
such a force and why he was able to, to take his game to a level that we hadn't, hadn't really seen many Ruckman do before. Six times All-Australian, what a player. I guess I'd describe him as a, a generational player who changed the game. But, you know, if I'm talking to people about Dean Cox, I'm largely just talking about what a ripping bloke he is and how much fun he is to have a beer with. And he was, he was like that when he was a kid when I was playing with him. And, you know, he's like that now. I'm as good a player as he was. I think the special thing about Dean is he was, he was just as good a bloke.